Today I'm going to be carrying out a blender test on my SGI Tesra just to see how it compares to the other SGI machines that I've tested and I will say that this will be the last blender test that I'll be carrying out in the next good while as I've been doing these tests at nauseam. The version of blender that I'm going to be using today is the exact same version of blender that has been used on all the other SGI machines and the test test.blend is the exact same test. So the results that you get here today will be a very true reflection as to how this machine compares to the other SGI machines that I've tested when it comes to rendering in Blender. I will also speak about the test results that I got from my various Apple machines that I tested as well. And just bear in mind there that the version of Blender used on the various Apple machines differed from each other and also differed from this version of Blender. So the results won't be 100% accurate in terms of how these machines compare. However, it should give you a relatively good indication. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start this test. And if you take a look at the system performance, you'll notice that all four CPUs are running at max. And each CPU has been allocated two threads. When it comes to the end of the rendering, you will notice that as you are left with about two threads, two of the CPUs will no longer be used. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, and at this point only two CPUs are being used. Okay, and this frame rendered in 1 minute and 8 seconds and 44 split seconds. The fastest time that I've got it to render on this machine is 1 minute and 6 seconds. So there is a little bit of a variation in terms of the performance that you get from the machine. I'm now quickly going to discuss some of the key Blender test results that I've obtained from the various machines that I've tested over the last few weeks. And in order to help me do this, I've set out the series of tables and graphs so that I can compare the results that I've got from the machines graphically. I'm going to start off by discussing the results that I got from the silicon graphics machines fitted with MIP CPUs. The fastest machine was the Tesra, fitted with four R16K CPUs running at 1 GHz, and it rendered the scene in 1 minute and 7 seconds. The next machine was the Onyx 2, fitted with four R14,000 CPUs running at 500 MHz, and it rendered the scene in 2 minutes and 13 seconds. The interesting thing to note here is that the CPUs scale perfectly. The Onyx 2 has 4 CPUs running at 500 megahertz, and the Tesra has 4 CPUs running at 1 gigahertz, and the Tesra rendered the scene in almost exactly half the time that it took the Onyx to do so. So from that you can see that megahertz for megahertz, the MIP CPUs scale perfectly. The next machine was the O2, fitted with a single R12,000 CPU running at 400 megahertz, and it rendered the scene in 11 minutes and 34 seconds. The slowest of the bunch was the Indy, fitted with a single R5000 CPU running at 150 MHz, and it rendered the scene in 57 minutes and 49 seconds. Next, I'm going to discuss the performance that I got from the Silicon Graphics Visual Workstation 320. This machine is not fitted with a MIP CPU. It is in fact fitted with two x86 CPUs in the form of two Pentium 3s running at 1 GHz. And this machine rendered the scene in 4 minutes and 53 seconds. And as far as I'm concerned, if you look at the year in which this machine was produced and where it fits amongst the SGI machines as well as the Apple machines, it did a pretty damn good job in rendering this scene. This brings me to the results that I got from the Apple PowerPC machines. The fastest machine that I tested here was the G5, fitted with two CPUs running at 1.8 GHz, and it rendered the scene in 1 minute and 9 seconds. The next machine was the G4 with mirror doors, and it was fitted with one CPU running at 1.25 GHz, and it rendered the scene in 5 minutes and 15 seconds. 
Just bear in mind here that the G4 with mirror drawers can be fitted with a dual CPU option running at the same frequency and in that case I'd imagine that it would probably render the scene in half the time. Next was the G4 Quicksilver fitted with two CPUs running at 800 MHz and it rendered the scene in 6 minutes and 9 seconds. The slowest of the bunch when it came to the Apple machines was the G4 Sawtooth fitted with a single CPU running at 466 MHz and it took 20 minutes and 32 seconds to render the scene. And also bear in mind here that this machine can also be fitted with a dual CPU option and I would imagine in that case that it would also render the scene in probably about half the time. I'm now going to conclude by discussing some of the conclusions that I reached as a result of these tests and I'm going to start off by comparing the test results that I got from the Tesro to those that I got from the G5. The Tesro was produced in the year 2003 and the G5 in 2004 and it took the G5 two seconds longer to render the scene. And from this I conclude that SGI was pretty much in the lead of the market during the 90s into the early 2000s. But by the time we reached the mid-2000s, the likes of Apple had already caught up significantly. And in 2005, when Apple released the next generation of G5, which had four CPUs fitted, this machine would have definitely outperformed the Tesro. And just bear in mind that Silicon Graphics sold the Tesro up until the year 2006. And I'm now going to conclude by comparing the results that I got from the Visual Workstation 320 to those that I got from the O2. Just bear in mind that both of these machines are at their maximum configuration. And it took the Visual Workstation 4 minutes and 53 seconds to render the scene. And the O2 took 11 minutes and 34 seconds. What's interesting to note here is that the Visual Workstation was released in the year 1999 and the CPU option fitted to this O2 was only available from the year 2000. So what's interesting here is that we all tend to love the MIPS IRX based silicon graphics machines and tend to disregard the x86 machines. But what I found in this test is that the Visual Workstation was actually a damn good machine and especially if you compare its performance to that of the O2. I hope you found this information to be informative and thanks for watching.